This is Desertopolis, a brand new 1.20 questing mod pack that has us starting out here in the middle of what I believe to be an endless desert. It's only desert as far as the eye can see. We start with nothing, but we do have access, of course, to our quest book here. And the very first quest says, welcome to Desertopolis. Thank you for downloading and welcome to Desertopolis, a 1.12 survival mod pack. As a reward here, we get a piece of scrap. Relic scraps is what we get, which I believe is the currency in this pack. And then we have a few more informational quests here in the first quest line. One tells us about the world. The world here has three biomes in it. Desert, which is full of sand. Normal mobs spawn at night. Sand, cactus, glass, and leather chickens also spawn here. That's very interesting. There is then the Badlands biome, which is full of red sand, has wither skeletons and blazes spawning in it, so kind of almost a nether-like biome that we have in the overworld. It also has clay, blaze, ghast, and silicon, as well as bone chickens. And then we have the eroded badlands, dangerous terrain. Oh yeah, ghasts spawn here. Clay, blaze, ghast, silicon, and bone chickens also spawn here. And then it says at the bottom here, squids and salmon can also spawn between Y levels 46 and 63. I assume that that is going to come in useful at some point throughout the pack. We then have the usual information about the quest book. We have FTB Ultimine in the pack. Relic scraps are the currency here that we get as quest rewards, and we can use them later in the pack to purchase stuff from a shop block that we can craft in the future. And then we also have uh, custom villager trades as well in the pack that allow us to use our relic scraps instead of emeralds. But with that out of the way, the first quest really is under the survival quest line here and it wants us to get just some regular cactus now we can i believe just kind of punch regular cactus to get cactus but we do take damage and so what might not be a terrible idea is potentially just breaking a little bit of the sand underneath the cactus to get it without taking the damage one other thing you might notice right from the get-go is that we do have water droplets above our hunger bar that is a thirst bar so we do have to drink water regularly here in the desert to stay hydrated and then in the center between the hunger bar and the little health bar there we also do have a gray circle and that is because we have the tough as nails mod installed which means that basically we have to take care of our temperature as a player right now you do start with climate clemency i believe you got about 10 minutes of climate clemency at the start of the pack, which means you're not affected by the heat or the cold or anything like that. But as soon as that 10 minutes is up, you then need to make sure that you are sufficiently cooled from the desert heat, which I believe is gonna be the uh, the primary factor for us. I don't think it's going to be particularly cold here, but uh, I do think it's gonna be particularly warm, although it could get uh, a little cold in the evenings, potentially, I'm not quite sure on that. Uh, one thing I did notice as well, we kind of walked right past it, but we did spawn, I believe, next to an Applied Energistics to Meteor. If we check the map here, you can kind of see it right there. We don't really need to worry about that too much just now because Applied Energistics, whilst in the pack, is uh, not a mod that we're going to be playing with for quite some time, but it's uh, nice to know and uh, interesting to have. And I think there might also be some, uh, some loot in there that we could potentially go and salvage at some point fairly soon. But I do want to get started pretty quickly here because... As I mentioned, we do need to uh, protect ourselves from the heat. So once we've got some cactus, we can craft that cactus into these green colored wooden planks. It's basically just like wood. We take the cactus and we craft it. I'm assuming we can then go ahead and craft a regular old crafting table. We totally can. Boom and boom. And from there, we now have four quest options available to us. We have the standard wooden pickaxe and wooden X. We also have a cutting board, which looks like it's going to allow us to make some kind of cactus-based food, which is definitely going to be interesting. And then over here, we have cactus armor. And this is by far and away the most important thing for us to get, I think, sooner rather than later, because it says it keeps us cool in the desert heat. And so if we want to make this, we need to get the standard 24 items. So we need 24 cactus, which is going to be a little tricky. We've got Four minutes, it shouldn't be too tricky. We do also have these um, cactus chickens. I do wonder, they do hurt you, which is interesting. I was not expecting that. And they don't drop cactus, which is also interesting. We did get a loot box though, which gave us some dirt, some uh, cobblestone and some sand. Not really what I would consider loot, but fair enough. This will lay an egg in 571 seconds. I do wonder 
There is almost certainly a way for us to get cactus out of that chicken. I think there's uh, other stuff that we can do with the resourceful chickens mods to automate the production of the resource that they are associated with. But for now, let me quickly just see if we can't get a few more cacti and we'll see about making that cactus armor. And speaking of uh, cactus food, right here in this chest, we do have some cactus slices and then cooked cactus slices, which are uh, very useful early on here because they give us the ability to not starve to death. We also have these uh, cow looking chickens right here. These are leather chickens. I assume we don't take any damage when we hit these. We don't. And I would also assume that yeah, they totally drop leather. Look at that. That is also gonna be quite useful because I don't know how good the cactus here is going to be in terms of armor. It is gonna be useful for making sure that we don't die to the sun, but I don't think it's going to be particularly useful in terms of uh, not taking damage from the hostile mobs that are going to uh, overrun the desert when night falls. I also don't think there's really an early game way for us to get any kind of bed. And so what I'm gonna do real quick, I'm gonna go ahead and make a shovel just so that we can kind of dig out the uh, the sand underneath these cactuses just a little bit faster. And of course by cactuses, I do mean cacti. But uh, if we dig out the sand underneath these a little faster, that should hopefully allow us to get to, uh, to 24 fairly quickly, hopefully before our uh, climate clemency runs out. Okay, so a little bit more cactus gathering later. We should now have more than enough to make this uh, rather dashing cactus armor here, a cactus veil, and then finally, of course, these uh, cactus boots. And uh, if we do something like this, it uh, looks a little bit more leafy than it does cactus -y, but it should now give us protection from the heat of the sun once our climate clemency expires. The next problem we need to take care of is water. And you'll notice here there are uh, quests that get us onto that water track. To get there though, we need glass and it looks like we're gonna be able to smelt glass on a regular campfire. Thankfully, the campfire here just requires uh, sticks and planks and the Twitch chat has very handily pointed out that we can break these uh, dead bushes here as a somewhat easier way to get sticks that doesn't involve uh, using all of our cactus to make sticks, which I think is also good for us. We do probably want to start growing cactus nearby, so I'll probably just do something like this. It is probably gonna take a little while for them to start growing, but I think we wanna start like farming these sooner rather than later because although they are pretty abundant, we don't wanna be walking further and further afield to get cactus every time we need it. Back over here though, let's see about crafting, I guess actually some of this cactus, now that I put it down, back into uh, planks so that we can make our campfire, which I believe is uh, one more plank actually, right? Boom, and boom, like this, and like this, fantastic. So this is heating as well, so you'll see this will increase our temperature. Uh, the cactus, poncho, veil, pants, and boots here do all have a cooling effect, so they are hopefully gonna negate the, uh, the campfire's effect just a little bit. And I'm fairly certain here that if we do one, two, three, four, just right click those on, we should be able to hopefully smelt some sand into glass. Nice. And from there, we can of course craft glass bottles with the standard recipe. And we can right click the glass bottles onto cactus to obtain water. Nice. And so these have like a little two water droplet effect. Although down here it says that we can make the water bottles better for us by purifying them, which is just cooking them on the campfire. It is getting a little bit dark and I am a little concerned about mobs spawning. I do see a creeper over there. We do have a little bit of leeway in that the mobs won't spawn super close to us, just standard Minecraft spawning stuff, but I am a little concerned nonetheless. Let's throw these on here just because it's free. It doesn't really cost any fuel or anything. I think the campfire will burn forever. And yeah, these give us now three hydration points instead of two. So we just don't have to uh, refill them as frequently, which is pretty useful. And it does appear that the water goes down quite slowly. So we don't have to be drinking too crazy often. Let's keep an eye out to make sure we don't die here. Also, by the way, this zoom mod is installed by default. If you go to controls, keybinds and uh, type in zoom, it's set to a different key by default. I've changed mine to C, you can bind it to whatever you like, but it just allows you to uh, zoom in and you can scroll if you want to go even further. And it gives you this kind of cool uh, camera effect that I uh, quite like. But anyway, back over here in the quest book, we, I think we kind of just need a lot more cactus to progress here because to make mini charcoal, we have to cook some planks on the campfire. And to make wooden pickaxes, wooden axes and cutting boards, these all require just more wood. And so, yeah, we kind of just need more cactus. It does look like we're not too far away from being able to get some torches. 
but I'm very concerned about the fact that we don't have any kind of weaponry. I do assume that we can probably make just like a regular stone sword here. And we do have a little bit of armor from our cactus. And so we might be able to get a couple more cactus out in the night. It's just going to be a little bit riskier. I am also going to continue to collect these dead bushes as we go to give us the maximum number of sticks. And there are also some tomato shrubs here that we can break in order to get tomato seeds. And I think occasionally some tomatoes as well. All right, so a fair bit of cactus gathering later. So we're back by the campfire. I'm cautious to get too close because there are a lot of creepers nearby and I don't really want to draw their attention to me. And so I'm gonna keep my, uh, my distance where possible here. And uh, we do need to drink another bottle of purified water. That's fine. We are a little low uh, on health as well. We did have a close call with um, a skeleton just a second ago, but we do have a lot of cooked cactus. I found even more of this stuff in uh, another chest, basically the same as the uh, the last one. And of course, I believe we can cook more cactus slices on the campfire into more cooked cactus. So from a food perspective, I think we're doing just fine. I will also drink the remainder of this purified water here. This is also not particularly hard to come by, especially when we're uh, this close to our campfire. But what we really need to do now is just kind of craft a lot of that cactus into planks and then start using those planks to, uh, to craft up some of these other items. But of course, in order to do that, we uh, we do kind of need to get back to our crafting table. And so what I might do is kind of try and, oh, we might be okay. I'm very concerned about this creeper right here and that skeleton on my right, they're flanking me either side. I'm, uh, I'm hopeful that we just won't die. Let me, oh, no, I hear him. I hear him, yep, okay. All right, hello, my friend. This is fine. We, um, we have the ability to end this man. We could obviously kind of set up some kind of, um, you know, underground base to, uh, to keep us safe throughout the evening. But at the same time, yeah, I, I thought he was onto me. At the same time, there's not really much we can do there outside of kind of just sit and wait. And so for now, I keep an eye on this guy, but I think we should be okay. Let me get a regular pickaxe. Let's also get a regular old X as well. That's two for one on the quests there. And then the cutting board is just two sticks and four planks. That is also completely fine. And I believe we can place the cutting board down on the ground like this. And it looks like we get the cactus slice by right clicking with an X on a chopping board with a cactus on it. So we place the cactus on the chopping board. Then we right click with an X to get the cactus slice. And then we can take that cactus slice, place it onto the campfire, and I assume that will then cook into the cooked cactus slice, which is a much better food source, albeit nothing really to uh, to write home about. And so let's take care of this creeper, ideally in such a way that involves him not blowing up everything that we have worked for so far. And then what I'll do is I'll plant the remainder of the cactuses that we have, and we'll look at moving on down this quest line. I do believe one of the quests wanted us to smelt some planks into tiny pieces of charcoal, so we'll get that cooking up right away here and then i'm gonna leave a little bit of space between my cacti we um also i do want this to be ideally a little bit more symmetrical so you know what real quick let me let me fix this we are gonna take some damage but we've got a fair amount of food and oh no <laughs> oh that was way too close let me uh step back let me gather my charcoal let's not burn ourselves on the fire and uh let's just quickly replenish our health while we're at it okay uh, thankfully the creeper kind of did that work for me there and that's um I did want to re-set up my cactus farm because I want it to be somewhat organized. I don't just want the cactus kind of placed down haphazardly. This is gonna do just fine for now. We'll let those grow and uh, hopefully that's gonna be a, an unlimited source of cactus for us going forward and we'll just craft that remaining one into planks. So we can, of course, craft our uh, mini charcoal here into regular charcoal and then from there, you do wanna make sure that the item touches your inventory otherwise the quest won't get completed. But from there, we can then craft that with a stick to get torches nice and we can use that of course to uh, increase the area around us that uh, mobs hopefully will not spawn in during the evening so now that's taken care of we're actually fairly close to finishing the first chapter of the quest book here we need to get some sandstone which we can do with our pickaxe and i assume there's going to be some fairly close by there is there's some right in this uh, handy little cavern that the creeper made for us fantastic i don't actually know how much we need just yet but back over here, we can use that cactus and it says we can smelt it on a campfire to create smooth sandstone. 
to auto that on. Our uh, hunger is full, which is a little unfortunate. I kind of want to sprint to make the hunger less full so we can eat and try and replenish our health. Because uh, entering tomorrow night with uh, one heart is not going to be a good time for us. What do we want to do with the smooth sandstone? We want to smelt it again into hardened sandstone. All right. One, two, three, four. It looks like we can use the hardened sandstone to make new tools that I assume are better than the previous tier of tools. And the second quest line here, the first quest does want us to make a sandstone pickaxe, and it says can be used to break stone. Nice. So I do see some stone over in the distance there, but I do also think that we could probably just dig down in this uh, handy creeper mid hole to find some cobblestone as well. It also doubles as a little bit of a hidey hole should the night become particularly dangerous. And uh, there's some stone. I should definitely bring at least one torch down here. And I do see that the next quest wants us to make a furnace. So I'm going to go out on a, on a whim here and assume that we need at least eight cobblestone in order to progress forward. And uh, chat is right. We do have the Ultimine mod here. So uh, what we can do is uh, if you hold down your Ultimine key, uh, by default, it's set to shapeless, which means it will just break uh, 64 blocks of whatever you're looking at at once, but it'll do it kind of randomly. If you uh, shift and scroll, I'm going to go to mining tunnel, which will just mine in a straight line. So if I mine this block here, it will then mine a bunch of cobblestone just in a straight line from where we're currently looking, which is uh, it's pretty useful. And so we've got just a ton of cobblestone now, which is very helpful. That's going to allow us to make multiple furnaces should we need them. And back up here, we should be able to do just a standard Minecraft craft, something like this. I will make at least three furnaces just in case we need to do a fair bit of smelting. One, two, and three. And the next quest wants us to make stone. Look at that. Fantastic. So let's do this. And I assume it's almost always going to be more efficient for us to make the wood here into charcoal pieces and then use those charcoal pieces as a way of uh, smelting stone as opposed to just using the, uh, the charcoal pieces themselves. And so from here, we can unlock the catalog. This is where we can spend our uh, scraps, these guys right here. And we also are working towards crafting a grindstone by the looks of it. The grindstone here is uh, two planks, two sticks, and a slab. And it looks like that is used in the making of the extractinator, which I believe is our first kind of forte into generating resources. It looks like it's going to allow us to generate copper, coal, and clay, which I'm very interested in. That looks like a new mod for uh, 1.20. So we need slabs. Those are easy enough. And then ideally, we want to get three grindstones here. Perfect. We have what it takes to make six of them. That's not a problem. And then from there, we could definitely do with a chest, but we don't have enough planks for it. And uh, none of our cactuses have yet to uh, provide us with any extra cactus, which is not ideal. But uh, to make the extractinator here, we need terracotta. And that, I believe, is where this map right here to the Badlands biome comes in. So the Badlands is where the terracotta is. And uh, if we right click here, it's going to tell us where the nearest Badlands is. Um, or at least ideally it would tell us where the nearest Badlands is. I thought there would be like a little X on the map somewhere. I can't help but notice there is no X, and so we might just have to uh, pick a direction and, and walk in it until we hit the uh, the Badlands. That is less than ideal. But uh, real quick, let me grab a few more cacti, and we'll get a chest down. Once we've got a chest down, I might also maybe just start building a little bit of a... Um, at like a basic fortress here because we could kind of do with a little bit of a safe space from mobs and for that we basically just need a lot more cactus we can use the cactus to make planks i don't think there's any way for us to get samplings at least not anytime soon we can get them from moss balls and then there's no recipe here for the moss balls so i'm not quite sure where we're gonna get those from but uh, if we get a little uh, campsite set up that can hopefully keep mobs out while gathering cactus i have noticed there's a little bit of crude oil up in the sand here I um I do believe there's probably a way for me to add a waypoint. There it is. If you press uh, M, by the way, you open up the map. You can then right-click, add waypoint. Uh, I'll put crude oil. Accept. And so that's just going to give us a little marker 
on the map so we know where that oil is in the future because uh, if we take a quick peek further down i do see some uh, pneumatic craft stuff that we're going to have to work through and so i assume that oil will come in useful uh, twitch chat has also pointed out that uh, i can just steal these chests that uh, we found the cactus in there's one right here and there's another one pretty close to our base as well they also gave me uh, a pretty good idea and that is that we can potentially just use the cactus as our base's wall as well because the uh the mobs are probably not going to try and break through the cactus the annoying thing is that we need, we just need a lot more cactus I, I don't know if there's a way for us to make the cactus grow faster than it's currently growing um, or if there's a way that we could potentially utilize the uh, the cactus chickens to you know greater uh, to produce greater amounts of cactus but for the time being let me go and throw down this double chest we'll put it down right next to our furnaces we'll do it here and here we can then dump basically everything in for now um, i will hold my sword and basically all my tools and then we'll go ahead and maybe look at getting a bit of a cactus wall going down here okay so i've built a very small little cactus wall around us i could probably do with making this a bit bigger but for the time being i think it might do the trick and uh, just to be safe i'm also thinking of crafting up some cobblestone wall here just to also potentially do something like this and uh, and kind of keep any mobs fully out of here because i think there is a chance they could potentially slip between the cactus also my head helmet broke and um, apparently that is due to the fact that we got very hot today and so i was hoping it would last a little longer but i think we're gonna have to replenish some of the uh, the cactus armor fairly regularly which again just kind of uh, points towards us needing quite a lot of cactus and i am also realizing i do need a way to get out of here as well but for the time being this is fine and hopefully he's going to keep us somewhat safe from mobs. I might even go ahead and make this a bit taller. And we could even potentially do something like this. Because what will happen here, I believe, is when the cactus grows, because there's a block next to it, it will just break like that. And so if we did that, if we had the wall one taller like this, that would result in cactus just kind of dropping all around the base, as so long as the cactus doesn't hit the other cactus, which could be good. But for the time being, I think this is probably better. I think we'd lose a lot of cactus doing it that way and so for now i think we'll just stick with uh, with something like this so now we've got the wall up the next thing that we need to do and by got the wall up i mean we've almost got the wall up let me do this and this it's obviously not going to be massive protection against uh, skeletons in particular but uh, almost anything else should be stopped anyway now that we have a little bit of uh, peace of mind let's see about this catalog this is made with one relic scraps and eight stone we do have nine stone here and we do have five relic scraps as well as a wallet that we could use to uh, to put the scraps in if, uh, if we find ourselves carrying too many but if we do something like this we get the catalog and the catalog is where we can spend our scraps on stuff i'm not quite sure what we can spend it on the dyes are interesting those could come in quite useful the basic loot boxes did not seem particularly great so i don't know if they're necessarily worth it and then other than that we have spray cans which i believe can be used to uh, spray stone to look like different colors of stone which i think is mostly decorative so for the time being i don't know if we necessarily need any of these but i think we can keep the dyes in mind for the future how much is a loot box is a loot box just like one a loot box cost four scrap <laughs> i don't know if that's worth it we could uh, we could buy it but i think it's um it's not ideal um, it does show us in here what we can use it for so we can get a sprayer which i believe you need in order to use the spray cans and then oh there are more things we can buy i see but we just don't have enough books for them so we've got uh different dye chicken spawn eggs which is interesting we kind of got the whole gamut there we've got a researching table from relics which i'm also interested in some other spawn eggs uh, a bunch of dyes and of course the spray cans interesting okay well bear that in mind there's also the uh Emadron tablet later on in the pack which is uh, almost certainly going to be useful for us and so we might even want to keep our scraps for that but uh, at this point now i feel like we kind of just need to go and try and find the uh, the nearest badlands biome and so let me take my uh, water bottles here let's quickly get filled up on water i'll also fill up on food as well and then as soon as morning starts i think we can start heading out and uh, and seeing if we can't find also i should probably not have my um campfire so close to the cactus the items kind of just fly off in all directions or at the very least i should maybe stay kind of close by to the fire so that when it does drop its items i can uh, pick them all up that seems pretty handy and it would be ideal if we get you know closer to a stack of cooked cactus here before we uh head out and of course we can uh, smelt more of our glass up into more bottles it is unfortunate that the water bottles don't stack 
But I guess at the same time, the uh, the glass bottles do. Although I don't really think we need more bottles, to be honest, because we can drink these and then we can just refill them at uh, at any cactus while we're out and about. So I don't think that uh, the water is going to be a particularly limiting factor for us. All right, day is breaking. Real quick before we go, we do want to make sure that we have our cactus veil on us like that. But uh, I think with that, we are pretty much ready to go. So I'm just going to head north because there's no X on this map telling me where the Badlands biome is. But uh, I am going to head north here, kind of hopefully in, in a fairly straight line. I'll probably continue to pick up cactus as we go because we do still need a lot of it. And our base back there is probably not going to be chunk loaded. So it's probably not going to grow much cactus whilst we're away. People in the Twitch chat did also point out that we can potentially look at getting a canteen as well, which is just for leather. And that canteen allows us to, uh, to carry more water around with us as well. And so if we see any leather chickens, killing a few of those could be useful to get us uh, three more leather and, uh, you know, allow us to make that, uh, that canteen. I do see what looks like terracotta in the distance. I also see what looks like leather chickens as well. So I feel like we can uh, kill two birds with one stone here. We can try and get some leather, although apparently it's not a guaranteed drop from the chickens, which makes sense. Uh, we do also have what I believe are sand chickens as well. Again, potential uses in the future if we can figure out how to uh, automate those. There's also some kind of uh, minecart shaft down there as well. But uh, really, we're not after the spiders. We are after the terracotta. So let's quickly head on over here. We do want to bear in mind that it did mention that the uh, Badlands biome does have blazers and wither skeletons in it. Oh, I will take a look in these, though. This looks like it could be quite useful. I don't know how useful some of this stuff is. Like, I don't know if a cooking pot is particularly useful or an NDIO wooden gear. I will take some of this stuff, though. The backpack is definitely useful, I think. The leather belt. You may learn more about this relic on the researching table. I see. We don't have the researching table yet. We could potentially unlock that in the future. Uh, cabbage seed, 21 torches is real nice. Loot capacitor. That could be useful uh, when we start working with NDIO. I don't really think we need any rails just now. There are more chests down there, but there is a spider on the way. I think we can probably... No, you know what? We'll come back. We'll come back. This is fine. Right now, we, uh, we're, <laughs> we're, just, we're just looking for terracotta, which we actually have right here. I should definitely have brought a better pickaxe. That is my bad, because we uh, don't have our sandstone pickaxe. We do have what it takes, though, to make a crafting table, and I do have what it takes as well to, uh, to get some more sandstone and make a sandstone pick, right? So if we do... Just a quick one of these. Let's set it back to shapeless and let's just mine a bunch of sandstone. We can then take all of that sand and sandstone that dropped. And hopefully, if we throw down another crafting table here, we uh, we should be able to just craft up the higher tier sandstone pickaxe. That is not going to work, Isaac, because you need, to, um, you need to, to craft it with a campfire. And so I guess, real quick, the campfire is also pretty easy to make. I don't really want to be spending this much cactus, but we can do one, two, three, four. Smelt that into a smooth sandstone and then do the same again. One, two, three, four. To get four hardened sandstone and then uh, craft up a pickaxe. People are asking me if I uh, left water bottles in this chest and there are water bottles in here. I, um, I just don't really think that we need this many water bottles. I think honestly carrying one water bottle around and one piece of cactus is probably enough to keep us fully full on, uh, on thirst. Apparently, that is the potential side effect of drinking the non-purified water, I guess, is that you get thirst, which I assume drains your thirst faster. So we probably do want to carry some purified water around. Maybe the game was just letting me know that my uh, opinion was wrong there. Either way, let's do a quick altar mine here and grab a bunch of terracotta. I'm just going to bring as much as we can carry back, and then we'll see about making the extractinator back at home. All right, so back here... At base, we are still the same as we were before when it comes to our amount of cactus. We don't have any new cactus. However, on the way back, I did find one more leather chicken, and so we do now have what it takes to make the empty canteen, although I actually don't know how we would uh, go about using the empty canteen here. I think we might have to find or produce an actual uh, like body of water that we can then you know fill up from, like if we make an unlimited water source potentially. For now, though, we can, uh, of course, refill our thirst and refill our hunger. And more importantly than that, we can finally look at making the extractinator. For that, we are going to need the grindstones we made previously, as well as six terracotta, which we now have. Nice. So we'll throw this down. 
This is a very cool little item from the Extractinator mod. And if we check here, it says can be used to extract items from blocks. Terracotta can be found in the Badlands biome. And so raw copper here is made by running the terracotta through the extractinator. And we also get clay and coal. So do I like hopper this in? Do I right click this? I maybe, oh yeah, right, right click it. Okay, we got a, a coal there. Let me uh, clear my inventory out just a little bit. We got a lot of stuff here that could be useful in the future, but for now is probably not particularly useful. As far as this backpack goes, by the way, uh, you can place this into one of your bobble slots. You click the uh, little icon here and you open your slots. You can then put this into the backpack slot and by default, I believe the key is B. It is, and if you press B, it opens the backpack, and so we could go ahead and kind of store our water in there if we wanted to, and maybe even our cactus as well, so that when we're out and about, if we need uh, to drink, we can just press B, grab the uh, water bottles that we have stored in there, and drink from them. Nice. Back over here, we can right-click on this, and I assume that we can just kind of, yeah, right-click as much as we like, and we just get a ton of coal, clay, and copper. The three C's. And so with that, we now have the ability to make regular old brick. And it wants us to make, of course, bricks, which are easy enough, just four brick, as well as a brick furnace, which is eight brick. And then a blast furnace, which is uh, three bricks, five brick, and a brick furnace. Okay, so we need a lot of brick. We only have 11 clay balls currently. The fact that we now have 23 coal is, is very nice indeed. That's gonna help us a lot with uh, smelting this stuff. We are almost certainly going to have to go back and get a lot more terracotta. The good news is, especially with the uh, the Ultimine, we can probably just take a couple of those sandstone pickaxes over and just Ultimine a ton of terracotta, bring it all back and just grind it all through this extractinator. That's 28 clay in total, which I think should be enough. Let's get all that smelting. While that's smelting, let me get cooking on the sandstone here. We could probably do with another campfire just to make things a little bit quicker, but again, we're really low on cactus, despite the amount of cactus we have down growing here. I'm gonna craft a bunch more of the sandstone. I'm gonna make, hopefully, a few more pickaxes, and we'll see if we can't get back to that terracotta before night falls. All right, so it's definitely a little dark here. It was a little bit of a risky trip, but we do now have a ton more terracotta available. And I'm assuming that any color of terracotta will work on the uh, the grindstone. We've got orange and, and regular, but I assume that both of these are equally likely to give us stuff. Yeah, they totally are. Look at that, fantastic. While we were away, this has been smelting away. So we do now have a bunch of bricks. There is one quest to get one brick, but I know we need at least three for this brick blast furnace. We also need at least one of these regular brick furnaces, and we also need the brick blast furnace. Nice. And with that, we can now smelt copper. I assume that we can only smelt copper, yeah, in the brick blast furnace. Fair enough. Okay, so we can put this down uh, somewhere around here. Let's put it down over here for now, on top of our catalog. This is a very temporary base setup, of course. And then in here, let's do this. And can we craft the coal into tiny coal? We totally can. The tiny coal is able to burn the same amount of items. So this smelts one item, whereas one coal smelts, I believe, eight items. However, uh, this is just more efficient because normally you put one coal in that one coal burns, and if you're only burning one item, you end up burning a whole coal to burn one item. Whereas if you craft it into mini coal first, it's just that little bit more efficient. And in here, we can throw our 37 copper, and that actually looks pretty fast. And with that, I think we're almost done with the extractinator section of the quest book. The only quest we have not done is craft the catalog book, which requires a regular book and a catalog. I don't currently think we have paper. We can go through the drying table here, but we also don't have string. I guess we could look at killing some spiders, which might honestly be our best bet in terms of getting a bed anytime soon. If we want to get a bed, I think we kind of need to get three wool, which means we need to get 12 string. There are string chickens, but we don't have any of those in the world. Chat does make a good point though, that we did find a mine shaft. We could go back to the mine shaft and see about taking our sword out and breaking that string. That's actually a very good idea, chat. Yeah, I'll give that a go. I have no idea why I lunged forward there. What do we have in the next quest line though here? 
So a copper pickaxe is the first thing on the list. That seems fair enough. Let's do one of these. Oh, that's not great. Excuse me? What in the... <laughs> Excuse me, rare exhausting... Excuse me? Rare exhausting zombie with what? Okay, so we died, which is not ideal. We do have a death stone, though, which I believe will teleport us back to where we died, which is uh, over there to um, that rare death zombie. Um, real quick, this right here is the uh, the meteor from Applied Energistics 2 that we spawned right next to. I think that there is something around here that's giving us the mining fatigue debuff, which is not ideal, but there are also things like slime, bread. There are also, there's also quite a lot of string here as well. We could potentially come back here, although the mining fatigue uh, would make that uh, needlessly difficult. I don't really want to jump down to where I can't get back out. I also do want to be very cautious about not, um, ideally not dying to any any mobs here. Um, oh, there are barrels down there as well. Oh, here we go. I don't know how useful any of this is going to be. I mean, I guess bread is actually just quite nice to have in general. It, uh, it's pretty good food. All right, let's, um, let's use our death stone here. Hopefully that zombie is gone. That zombie is indeed gone. I, I didn't build my base with magic zombies in mind, but here's our dead body. We can uh, transfer our items, thankfully, back to us. We do need a little bit more inventory space to get our backpack back. And I think as soon as we take all of the stuff that the, uh, the cops here might disappear, hopefully somewhat quickly. But uh, yeah, the next quest here does want us to go all the way down to like the negative Y levels to start mining some deep slate. It looks like we can mine the deep slate and then we can uh, smelt it to make regular deep slate. And we get the cobble deep slate, of course, from mining. And it looks like we're going to use that on the extractinator to get to iron and lapis. So presumably, we, uh, we want to make that copper pickaxe like that. And then I assume we can go down to, uh, to the lowest Y levels and use that on the deep slate to uh, to get iron. And so I might do that while we wait for the uh, the day to dawn, especially given that my tunnel is uh, is right here. And of course, one thing that we didn't do earlier that we totally should have done, first of all, is we should have gotten uh, torches, which I will do real quick. But uh, what you can do is uh, if you hold your alt mine key, you can then shift and scroll down to mining tunnel, which will dig directly down, which I think is what I accidentally did before. I meant to do a uh, small tunnel before, which will dig in a straight line. Uh, but if you do mining tunnel, that will uh, dig diagonally down so a mining tunnel and then you just mine and it creates like this staircase pattern which you can do a few times up like so and then you've got just a nice staircase that goes all the way down and uh, if you do it enough times you don't end up banging your head on the wall which is nice so uh, i'm gonna go grab some torches then we'll go ahead and uh, use the torches that we already have never mind thank you chat we will uh, use these torches and let's head down and see if we can't get to the negative y levels where we can hopefully here we go find some deep slate which we can then Go back to shapeless, and just like with the terracotta, I say shapeless, although it looks like it's going to break the stone there as well. Interesting. I really thought that was only going to break the deep slate, although I guess the deep slate is also kind of a, a, a kind of stone. Fair enough. Uh, let's continue that, I guess, in that case, with the mining tunnel, like this, because I think that's going to give us more deep slate than just mining around us. And once we've got multiple stacks of cobble deep slate, we can now head back up to the surface and hopefully use this to smelt and get a bunch of uh, deep slate, which we can then use to get iron and lapis. And of course, hopefully at some point, we're going to look at automating all of this. Also, for those wondering, you can uh, press the middle mouse button in your inventory to organize it like this. And back up here, our uh, death body is gone, but our death point is still there. We can uh, go ahead and get rid of that. And let's go and begin smelting up many stacks of deep slate to get all the iron and lapis that we want and over here we've got 22 copper which is very nice indeed and i guess as soon as we have one here we can just go ahead and right click it like that i don't know what the odds are on getting any of the stuff oh no we got iron look at that oh so some of it kind of sits in there and it pumps it out interesting but we have both iron and lapis and presumably just like before we can smell that iron inside of the uh, the blast brick furnace here to get our first iron ingots and that opens up a little bit of stuff for us. We um we get buckets. It says allows for the collection of water and other fluids, which is good to know. Real quick though, whilst all of this stuff gets done, I'm gonna quickly eat my cake. And I'm also going to head back 
to the mine shaft with a somewhat clear inventory because I would like to get hopefully enough string to make a bed so that going forward we don't have to uh, deal with the hostile mobs in the evening. Okay, so we got 12 string, which is enough here to make three wool, which we'll use for a bed when we get back. There is also a, uh, a random chest here under this pillar, which I am pretty interested in. It is just sand and wheat. Okay. <laughs> I, I will take the chest again because uh, we are still a little bit light on planks. I saw this earlier whilst I was uh, running away from mobs in the evening, and I didn't want to stop an opening in case it was booby trapped, but uh, thankfully it's not. Back over here, we should now hopefully be able to get our bed up and running. And that I think is going to make life so much easier for us going forward. What's also going to potentially make life easier for us is uh, kind of fixing in this hole a little bit. It's also going to make it a little easier for hostile mobs to get to this little entryway that we've made here, which is probably not ideal. If we do this, it also allows us to get down to our uh, mine shaft. But uh, let me clear this inventory. I did also open up a few more uh, minecart chests while we we're out there, which is why we have more ender pearls, more slime balls, and more wooden gears, as well as 25 relic scraps as well, which I was very happy to uh, to find there. And I will also just get you down there for now. Our deep slate is doing real well. And let's grab, if we have them, three planks, which is the perfect amount to make ourselves a bed. Nice. And uh, we'll throw it down, uh, maybe like right about here for the time being. Again, very haphazard. Again, very temporary. Uh, we've set our respawn point and now hopefully as soon as the night falls which shouldn't be too long we should be able to sleep and we should be able to avoid fighting any of the hostile mobs that so far have been making our lives a little bit more difficult than it needs to be over here we can right click nice and quickly i uh, i do also wonder if you can just hopper into this extractinator i would assume you can potentially hop or pipe into it to uh, automate this kind of system in the future and um yeah the hopper is one of the next quests as well which is leading me to believe that that probably is the case. I will actually go ahead and make the hopper right away. Actually. I'll go ahead and break this chest again, and we'll see about using that for our hoppering endeavors. We could probably also do with making like just an even bigger cactus farm, like taking all the cactus that we currently have, which has finally started to grow, cutting it down and just replanting it again further out because we need, by the looks of it, so many planks, and we just don't have access to that many planks going forward. Can I do this? and this yes it's not as fast i also wonder if you have to um hop her out of it because at the top there you'll see it says one lapis and one iron and from four initial products that's not that great how much cactus do we have we have got basically no cactus and while we could uh, like, we'll just use the uh, the block method here let me grab uh, ideally something like dirt that's easy to break and we'll do that just so we can hopefully pick this cactus up without having to uh, to break the sand underneath it we do run the risk of course of uh, losing the cactus and the dirt when we do stuff like that which is not ideal uh, but i'm just looking for enough cactus here to make one more chest so we can make one more hopper because i then want to see if we can hopper out of the bottom of the extractinator if we do something like that we totally can it gave us one of each. I wonder if that's because it can't hold more than one inside of it. Let me try that again. If I put seven in here. That looks like it's working better now. Maybe still not perfectly. Like it might be still the case that you get more if you just right clicked. Because that gave us three iron and two lapis. I'm very interested here. Let me take another seven and let me just right click those on. So right now, let me get rid of the lapis that I have on me. And we have got zero iron. And then if I right click this on, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Oh, I guess that also just got extracted. We maybe got about the same. Fair enough. So maybe it is just worth kind of just pumping it in like that. I do wonder if there's a way to get, oh, we can get deep slate and stuff from the resource generator. Interesting, which I did see a quest for, I think a little bit later on down the line it's right here so we need both lava and water which i think is one of the things we're going to start working on fairly soon once we have that though we should be able to start generating deep slate and then we can automate things like the extractor to here to hopefully automate the production of things like iron speaking of which let's make sure that uh, all of these furnaces are uh, kept stocked up ideally with mini coal just for that little bit extra 
added efficiency. Uh, back here in the Age of Iron, the quest book does want us to make a regular old iron bucket. Again, not quite sure how we're going to get water just yet, but for the sake of completedness, let's do something like that. And I think that that is that quest line complete. Just as soon as we make the last iron pickaxe, which does require one more stick. Thankfully, it is night, and so we can quickly go ahead and uh, sleep here. And once we've slept, we can then hopefully get just one stick from this guy. And by that guy, I obviously meant this guy. Fantastic. And that should be everything to make our first iron pickaxe, which in turn should be the completion of that quest line. And also kind of the completion of the survival chapter here, the first chapter of the quest line. The only thing we've not done is make the catalog book, which is just a way of using the catalog while you're on the move. I don't particularly think that we need the catalog. And currently we don't... Um, have like an easy way of making paper. We can use the drying rack. We could go and get string to make the drying rack and then use uh, log sheets to make, you know, we could use some of our planks to make pressure plates. We could use our pressure plates to make log sheets, log sheets to make soaked paper, soaked paper to make regular paper and then regular paper to make a book with some leather from a leather chicken. But I don't know if all of that effort is worth it to use the catalog on the move, especially given that there's not a whole lot, at least not at the moment, that I think we need from the catalog, especially not while we're on the move. One thing I am interested in, real quick, we have this uh, leather belt here, and we do have the ability to purchase the researching table for 24 relics, which I think I'll do. And then if we throw this down, can I just like place the belt on there? Crouch and right click. Leather belt plus one experience point for each experience gained by equipping talismans. Oh, we can level it up, interesting. This is not a mod that I've played with before. I don't know if I can, um, can I use this? Oh, I see, I can now. Increase the maximum number of slots equipped to two. So I can put this on, and when I wear it, I presumably get this effect. Plus one experience point for each experience gained by equipped talismans. All right, sure. Again, not particularly sure how that's helpful, but we'll throw it onto our uh, belt. It uh, gives us a little belt buckle at the front there as well, which I guess is nice to have. And next time, chat, we'll come back, and we'll start work, I guess, on the water section of the quest line here. We'll look at getting some water, look at getting some lava, probably get our first bits of automation up and running using the uh, resource generator too, and uh, looking at automating the extractor here to automate uh, the iron, the lampis, the copper, the clay, and the coal. All of that seems like it'd be fairly easy for us to do. And then we can press forward into the pack. We've got some core mods in here, like uh, integrated dynamics. We also have pneumatic craft, as we saw earlier. We've got applied energistics. We've got Ender.io back for the first time in a long while. That is somewhere around here. Age of Diamonds. We've got the uh, Sank Mill and the Alloy Smelter. Uh, Android IO is finally back in Minecraft 1.20. I'm very excited to play with that. And of course, we've got some more quests towards the end of the pack as well. But for now, I'm going to go ahead and wrap up this episode of Desertopolis there. Mm -hmm.